Apart from fire, now, if that idea seems strange, given that fire is famously a destructive force, ask a blacksmith about the creative uses of heat and flame. The furnace and the forge are very old testaments to what fire can do in the right hands. Not as old, however, as some tools of another trade. If you cannot find a blacksmith to ask about the uses of fire, find yourself, as Hattie Kaufman has, a glassmaker. Beneath the glaciers of the Cascade Mountains, fire is replacing ice. Imagine gathering honey on a spoon. It's the same thing as gathering glass on the end of a blowpipe. And as I turn it, the glass is wound on. The medium is malleable. I can only get so much glass at a time, just like you can only get so much honey at a time. Now, as I'm working it, the glass is cooling and becoming stiffer. Made of soda and sand, dependent on searing heat and quick reflexes. Flexible enough to be melted, shaped, reshaped, and made solid again. Outside Seattle, the Pilchuck Glass School attracts the world's best glass artists. Teachers and students spend their summers in front of a furnace, coaxing beauty from white hot liquid. I love the heat. I love the fact that you can, you can make anything if you have the skill. The campus is a laboratory for the art form. Until the 60s, glasswork was confined to factories like Murano in Venice. Lino Taglia Pietra's family worked there for four centuries. This one's Murano, 1929. Murano. Yeah. I probably my father, the, the main. That was your father? Historically, a glass master's design was his fingerprint, private and exclusive. Fantastic craftsmanship, even in this time, yeah. One summer, Lino left the Venetian factory to teach at Pilchuck, that shattered tradition, an Italian master sharing techniques that had been considered secret and sacred. Lino shrugged it off and told his critics if the art wasn't shared, it would die. Before Lino came, uh, the skill level in America isn't anywhere near what it is now. And my generation of glass blowers is the first generation in a lot of ways to have the chance to learn from Lino. Hey, Professor. Czech glass master Stanislav Lubinsky is another visiting artist. The other question is when we do the eye and we put the retina and the pupil on, do we cover it in clear glass so it's more like a lens or do you want the color right on the surface? Turn, Rob. Turn faster. Glass work nice. demands collaboration. Often one person inspires the design and a team brings it to life. Oh. Is that okay? Okay. Alright. What takes shape at Pilchuck is the future of glass. That intrigued curator Patterson Sims, whose Seattle Art Museum is hosting a retrospective. It really took a group of artists in the United States to move glass into a sculptural realm, to take it beyond function, beyond institutional utility, and to say, let's just use it as a medium for color, as a medium for uh, the beautiful qualities that you can bring to either blown or molded glass. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Ginny Ruffner came to Pilchuck with a resume in drawing and painting. She stayed on to teach and pioneered lamp working the fusing and sculpting of glass rods. Ginny's art dangles from the ceiling, peers out from bookshelves. Her work is exhibited internationally, some of it zany, all of it powerful. Why paint on glass? Why not on canvas? 
Well, because cannabis is usually flat. Four years ago, a head-on car crash left her badly shaken. Her artistic spirit is intact. Ginny's Invasion series gives the glass dimension and challenges perception. Viewed from the front, this Martian is standing in a downpour. Turn it around, the thunderhead is a rainbow. I don't know if I'd be here if it weren't for Pilchuck. I consider myself a Pilchuck artist. I started there 18 years ago uh, as a neophyte. Uh, I got a job as a truck driver. William Morris is another Pilchuck success story. Once a student, now an international artist, collected and exhibited in museums. Glass is a natural material, and I'm trying to represent natural objects. What are these that are? Is it like an arrow or spear? Arrows or spears, and um, not necessarily, of course, of um, a lethal um, manner. Some of them are more ceremonial in representation. You have to look closely to realize that the finished work is glass. It resembles ceramic and bone. A lot of people say that I deny the nature of the glass, but uh, in essence, I've sort of distilled it down to more uh, subtle aspects, the translucency and the ability to take on certain forms that no other material will. Last week, the students packed up. And the alumni came back to celebrate Pilchuck's first 25 years. They filled a time capsule with memories from their first quarter century. Curator Patterson Sims. Great masters have been willing to share. And in that sharing, they provided the opportunities and the experience of hundreds of years to be encapsulated in a matter of um, a year or two or three or four of apprenticeship. And these young American artists have become the apprentices to the great masters of Europe and elsewhere. What began as an experiment, an artistic colony in the woods, is now a school on the cutting edge, bending glass away from its functional history, taking it wherever the artistic imagination wanders. Pilchuck has grown up alongside an art form, and both are a work in progress. <laughs> 